that's something that homeowner association has been working on diligently for years to try to how do we educate people on what requires a permit and what does not you know i mean you have so many people who rely on us as contractors and professionals to come in and and, and tell the truth about you know what's required and what's not required and i mean you know he's an fbi agent um, he doesn't know and i'm not saying that's right wrong or different i'm just trying to say to the board that this is something my industry is trying to fix how, how do people know you know what's what's required for a permit and what's not and how do we get that message out to the community so that the unlicensed people are not hired and, and continue to operate in our community and things like this happen yeah so, i appreciate that I, I, you know, I just wanted to assess the facts and was issue of whether or not the permit was in place before construction started uh, has surfaced, so I just wanted to know exactly what happened and what transpired for that to be the case. And Ms. Gatsby, that's one of the things I asked the contractor. I asked him specifically staff. You know, I didn't want any shortcuts or anything like that. I'm not going to put my name out there and show less integrity. And uh, I went on He's done work for me in the past. Not there. Not there. Who's the name of the builder? The contractor. My name. And so he's done work for you in the past, and um, he was under the impression that the landowner, homeowner, was supposed to secure the plan. Well, when I say he's done work for me in the past, he's he's on pictures for me inside the house. He's built. Uh, He's built storage bins inside of a storage room inside my house. Is he a licensed contract? Stay with Mr. Warren. He's not. He, he is a, a, a handyman, if you will, and I'm no disrespect. I don't mean to sound derogatory, but he has a handyman service and he's not licensed. But you know, again, I go back to what I was saying a minute ago. How do we keep these people from presenting themselves? What you did, if we understand correctly, you had a conversation with Mike. Yes. And the statement was made that it normally is the contractor. Yes, he told me normally. And he didn't think one was required for me. That's correct. Okay. Sir, you yeah. mentioned that you mentioned this to Matt Martin. Mike. Or Mike Martin, that he gave you. Yes. Cover. Yes, and I, and I explained that to you. That I was going to, I was going to have my roof covered on my home. Okay. Did he say you can complete the project? Is the question. He I said you can complete the project. That's what he said. Yes. Let's come to the middle of the street. Y'all take that. Trace. Trace. I received second and third hand information. I have not had this conversation with Mike directly. My meeting supervisor, Matt Martin, did have that discussion with, with Mike Martin. And according to information I received from Matt, the conversation was that Mike told Mr. Bolton to stabilize the project, to do what he needed to do so that the weather didn't deteriorate the building. And any work that he, could, any work that he did was at his own risk. I think it probably would be helpful if you were here. Um, obviously, we're going to have questions for him, perhaps. I don't know. Not for Matt. He never authorized to continue construction. I can see if Mike is available for the That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. If you'll give us a few moments, we can see if Mike is available. Okay, thank you. Yeah, on, on your packet, Engineering, there's a statement from them concerning, <coughs> excuse me, uh, already had a structure built over the easement. This easement doesn't appear to have utilized until you reach 2825 Bud Packet, which I assume is to the south side. Sorry. Utilities had no comment, fire department had no comment, health department no comment, plan review, south wall requires one hour fire rate from both sides of the wall, which is a, uh, a requirement in the building codes. Landscaping, community, no comment, traffic, no comment, police, no issues. There may 
you might be available to answer your question on how the trans how it transpired from stop work notice to allowing him to dry in where they had taken the roof off and ended up completing the job. Uh, You said that on the north side there used to be a dog pen and there was an already existing concrete slab and that it sloped back it toward the field. Was there concrete on the south side already existing? Or it was everything, you can't see it, but everything in my backyard was concrete except for a small area where it was back. As you pull in through the gate, it was concrete. Uh, the, the previous landowner or the previous owner had a 38 to 42 foot uh, motorhome settlement had between the Stewart property and that building. He backed in a mobile home. He backed in basically in the place where you got a picture that showing the boat and the golf cart. Right. And that was concrete from when he poured it. Park, and all the concrete in front of and behind that building and to the north of that building. Was that a 50-foot slab? Without any structure built on it? You know yes. Everything was slab. Like the driveway went all the way through the gate. The, the driveway drive went to the back property line. The driveway went all the way to the back property line. Between the back property line and the building, concrete all the way up. Uh, it goes from the corner of the fence all the way up to where you see that was all ready concrete. And that center little building park was there when you purchased the property? Yes. share with us the uh, details of that conversation to the extent that you can recall? Um, sorry, I don't know what, what, what job we're talking about. Oh, I'm Bob, sorry. Bob Bolton's. Okay, Bob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where he, he had an existing building, had a gentleman adding on to it, making some corrections, right. some additions. They had commenced work, and then there was apparently a complaint, a stop issue, a stop work issue was ordered, they stopped work. He, came, he said he came to talk with you mm -hmm. about the fact that part of the roof was off and we had rain okay. and yeah. he had water coming in. But yeah. we were not trying to tell you what the conversation was. So if you no, I, 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 I just I wasn't yeah. aware of what, what, what the case was, okay. I guess. Uh, Thank you. He came to talk with me. He had, uh, the, when we stopped the work, he had already added on, on one side of the of a, an existing building. There was a, a roof structure that he had added out over a uh, concrete slab. And he already had the framing up and the plywood on it. And we stopped it at that point. And he asked me if he could go ahead and continue to cover, get the cover on the roof uh, and stop after he got that far. And I, I told him, yes, that would be fine. That would be, it would be at his risk. That uh, you know, if he wanted to go ahead and cover it up, I wasn't going to stop him from covering the plywood up. So that if he did get his case heard and it was proved, he, his uh, his work would not be compromised, and he already done it. But if it was not approved, then whatever work he did would be at his own risk, and that's the way we think. When you say covering up, you're talking about actually putting the actual root tiles on there, and yeah, yeah, not yeah. just covering up the plastic. Yeah, no, we're talking about tarmac or something like that right. until. Yeah, he, he asked if he could go ahead and put the shingles on it, and I told him that I would not stop him. 
But again, that's at his risk. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's a lot greater chance of a, a greater loss of expense there if the case is heard and not approved. And I told him that it would not have any bearing on whether or not the case was approved. He could not claim this as a hardship or any other, anything like that. But, but if he, but I, wa I would not stop him from covering it up. But I said, I did tell him that that was where he needed to stop. Once he got the roof covered, he stopped. Would that, would that be considered a completion of the job? When he no, sir, it would not be completion of the job. It would have just been covering up a portion of the roof that he had already had done. Uh, just putting the shingle on the firewood would not complete the job as I understood it. We take a look at these photos. Give me your opinion. here in support. You have two letters that he has circulated that we will make part of the record. I think you are not one of the letters, ma'am. Right. Could I get your name and address for the record and that you are for or against or non-committal for, for the record? Um, my name is Susan Stewart. I'm at 
is the same there. Tracy, do you have to tell? Somewhere in the packet, and I hard me to jump it in, but I thought I read that, that there was a designated drainage easement, but that it really had no effect until another house or two down toward the south side. So engineering didn't, didn't have any issues. I'm not jumping to conclusions. I'm no, just trying I'm to determine is, is there an easement that kind of runs on both sides of that fence that naturally takes water and runs it to the south? I'll, I'll put it this way. There does appear to be a recorded easement that is 20 feet wide. And as best we can tell, we've not done our survey or anything like that. As best we can tell, there's 10 feet on Mr. Bolton's property and 10 feet on the, on the adjacent property. As best we can tell. Okay. And again, the engineer said that it was another house or two down we're, south that is where they felt like there was issues that had to be tended to with the drain. Right. Okay. Um, for her, I wanted to ask Mr. Bolton if. Um, Thank you, ma'am. The, the water that comes off, well, off the front of your shed, for lack of better words, that hits this part of the driveway that I can barely see here. Right. Um, I'm assuming this is the driveway that runs all the way up or close to it, right? For a better picture. This water here, when it comes off, where does it go? It goes towards the street? No. That, that's the whole thing. That pad is, follows the topography of the land, okay? And when that water comes off, it goes, to, it goes towards Susan's fence. And then it goes to the back corner of my drive. When I say drive, where does it go? That motorhome used to be parked. It would be, so none of this naturally runs down the driveway. This water comes off here and, and works its way back around. If I'm facing Stuart, uh, Susan's right here, okay, yeah, I mean, and this is, a, this is the roof right here coming off, okay? okay. All right. This water is going to run down that pad and turn and go out that corner over there. Okay. Always has. I've always had, in fact, I get out there after it rains sometimes with a flat shovel and just scrape up mud and stuff that's come from other parts of my yard. And then what I'm getting to is we usually don't like to make suggestions or recommendations unless they're conditions, but I mean, what I'm getting to is could some of the concerns of the neighbors be, be, be addressed by capturing that stormwater off the roof in a gutter system and sure. just easily draining it down your driveway and, and not dumping it on, on, on anybody. I mean, I don't know where we, you know, I don't know where we, I don't know where we go. Because of the fog. I mean, That's the question I had when I asked you about the gutters. I, I'm with you. I, I'm 100% with you. Any work that comes off that building, and before that building was built, uh, excuse me, before the additions, okay, understand that that dog being slanted toward Mr. McCreary's backyard, mm -hmm. okay. In fact, I took part of that undulation out of there so that I could put that pad flat. That water, all of that water that landed there, ran out the back side behind that building to that corner, That's which would be that corner that I Okay, now, this pad, all of this concrete slants south. The, the, the pre-existing. Right. It, you know, it's, it, it just slants that way. As, and like Susan and I were talking about last night, if you went up to the top of, the, of Bud Mackey Circle, you would have probably had to put six or eight feet of dirt in there to make everything level. I mean, it's just a natural refinement of that subdivision, a little wood, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So Berkeley Drive, you're familiar with Berkeley. I mean, you, you know the slant of Berkeley Drive. And, and I'm, I don't understand, and y'all can help me out, as, as far as the easement is concerned, okay? I know on the, the, the property between Berkeley Drive 
and Bud Knight and Slurk, okay? Those houses that back up each other over there, there is a drainage ditch over there, it, it, if I'm not mistaken. It, this area right here, that is a drainage ditch that goes through there, and it's four to five feet deep. Okay. And it runs all the way up to uh, Peter Road. And, and where it dumps into down here, because you've got Cannon Drive to the south, I don't know where it dumps into down there. Now, as, as far as Willowood is concerned, is this you, Mr. Curry, right here? Is that, is that me? Okay, this is you right here. I rode around there yesterday. There, there appears to be, and, and I'm not sure exactly which piece of property that it's on. I don't. I, I think it's on this piece of property, but there, is, there appears to be a drainage type ditch. It looks like it's all grass. It looks like it's all mobile. Does that make sense? But it's, I mean, to me, it's a, a visible easement. Whereas nothing through here is visible. Okay? I mean, that, that's that's a fence all the way to to uh, Eagle Road. Every, everybody's got. We all back up each other. <coughs> Yeah. Did you know that you had an easement? I didn't even know it until I read that. Okay. You, when I went by and looked at the place, Bob, it looked to me like at least to some degree you had some slope from east to west. Your drive was going up just a little bit. What My drive goes up from, from west to east. That's right. From, it falls from east to west, right. down to the right. Street. Right. But once you get to the crest of that, then it slopes back east. You know? The crest being where the, the gates are. And it starts. Kind of undulating that way again. 